Right then. Char pad. I have now full screen. We are in HD instead of half HD like I was last time because I didn't know my settings. This has been developed by Stacy. He's done a really good job. I can, I'm really impressed with what he's done. And so we're going to try and get this screen, even though I've done it already, on, on the C64. Now, I've never used Charpad before. This was a learning exercise for me. But it's... Once you get into it, it's not that difficult. Now, I don't know the in, in, internal mechanics of how to do it. I've, just, I've left that up to Stacy, but I know how these tile things work now. So up here, we've got our character set. And each character is a unique character. There's none that are the same that I could see. Saying that. No, they, they're different. If you use a compressed tool, it takes out all duplicates and Does renumbers it? all your tiles for you. What, even re remove duplicate tiles? Oh, okay. It'll remove duplicate characters as far as I'm aware. It'll remove duplicate tiles, but your tiles should be unique anyway. All right, let's see what happens. Oh! Well, I never. So there were duplicates. Ah, okay. Bring it on. <laughs> so, so from what I know, this is a character, and these are your tiles. Now, the tiles at the moment are two by two, but you can have all these lots, which I thought, I mean, 10 by 10. That's what? Two rows and four across, isn't it? On the screen. But I presume this one you can use when you do scrolling, isn't it? Scrolling maps. Make them big. But this one's a 2v2. That's what Stacy's done. <laughs> and so these are the individual tiles. And then these individual tiles make up the screen so because there are two by two we have got 20 tiles across the top and 11 down which is 22 lines i think that's a couple of lines short from the screen and so to try and put these on the screen we've got to convert this tile using this map into its individual characters so the routine that I've done is inspired by Shallon, of course. Um, but I've tried to take, I've tried to simplify it for the common man because he's a Jedi Master and uh, we are just Nimir Jedi Knights. So, what I've tried to do is I've tried to simplify the, the code. But still perform the same task and I hope I've done that but I've also found a couple of tricks that um, even I didn't know and I thought oh cool so the first thing we need to do is we need to export this these this information so we can use it and the way to do that is file export as binary we're gonna select them all and we're gonna put them into the github repo so I've got twitch streams and we've got I've got a char pad, pad place now so that has created as you can see five files now from my understanding this is the map and of course you can't see it this is the character information and this is the tile information now the tile attributes and the character attributes, this I think has the color information in of the tile. 
I don't know what the other information is, but there was some something about a material, but I'm not sure about that. But we're just concentrating on the colour. And this one is the individual character colours. Um, this one, when I looked at it, it was just all cyan. It was just exported as cyan. So I think the character colours were not using. So I'm not going to use the character colours. The, the materials is um, a, a four bits of bits that aren't used in the colour palette. So you can use them to define things like whether a character's solid, whether it kills you, whether it's got any special features. Right. But this, the, the kind of user defined, it's just like a value from 0 to 8, or much so 0 to 7. All right. That you can use for, for, for stuff. Um, it, it's just purely because it's wasted space on, in, in the... Um, in memory so you yeah. can recover it and, and use it all right stacy no we can't hear you even though you're in the chat we can't hear, uh, even though you're in the channel we can't hear you stacy you need to make sure you've set the um whatever button you want to use to press the talk because uh, it doesn't support automatic microphone turning on and off so you go into settings in discord uh go into audio and then click on click to talk I'll press the talk and then say what button you want to use. All right, let's put the iPad there so I can see the chat that's going on. Right. So, I'll carry on while uh, Stacy tries to communicate with us. Right, so what we're going to do is we're going to take this information and we're going to try and re rebuild it in such a way that we can display it on the screen. And like I say, it's inspired by Shalom's routine, but I've tried to uh, I've tried to um, simplify it a little bit because Shalom, like I say, he's the master, and hopefully you guys will be able to understand what I've done here and hopefully you'll be able to recreate it so we're going to create a file I've imported my constants file as you can see which is the same file as before as we used on the sprites just that I thought I'd use it in here as well because I'm keeping the sprites and this separate even though I've been showing off with quasi in the in the scenery so we're going to create a new file call this uh, map loader or something like that now we'll put the standard stuff in and I'm cheating because I've got this just in case I get lost I've got the code here that works <laughs> right so we need to um, when I was doing this we need to recall we need to keep track of several pieces of information one is the row which row are we on the other one is the column which column we on and tile number so we need to set up some placeholders for those so we'll do that so row and we'll put it directly after where our sprite stuff is so we don't overwrite any sprite stuff because when we merge the two files together we want it to work And like I say, this area of memory, 02A7 up to 02FF, is free. It is not used anywhere. So you can use this 30 odd bytes, I think it is, or maybe more. No, it's 80 odd bytes, isn't it? Yeah. Someone's trying to talk. It's RE. Right, so there's the there's our um, placeholders. So let's get into this. Ari's still having troubles trying to get a mic going. Right, so we're going to set the border colours and the screen colour. So I'm going to set the border colour or the no, set the screen colour to zero. And we're going to set 
the screen to six, which is blue, I think. The background color. Hi. Hello. Oh, okay. Now you, you can hear me. I just popped in a, a microphone and I had me a guy. I never used the uh, I never <laughs> used the sound in this talk uh, before. Welcome. Yes. I wouldn't have uh, much to say to contribute though, but I will watch uh, interesting. That's all right. That's all right. So um, so I've set the colour. Now we need to set up the Vic Bank. We need to set up the Vic chip to one. We, we need to load up the custom, the defi user defined characters, and also we need to set where the screen's going to go. Now, Shalom put in his routine um, the Vic Bank underneath Basic and the Kernel. Now we're not going to do that. We're keeping basic and the kernel in place. We're going to do it like a a a, a mere mortal coding the the C sixty four. So we're going to you. We're going to set the Vic up to use the bank. I think it's three. Hang on. If you leave the kernel and the basic bank to you, can lose a lot of CPU because it keeps stealing cycles. Yeah, I know, but I. I'm, I'm just trying to teach the concept, mate, rather than the, the optimizing. I mean, the optimizing will come later on. I mean, I understand why Shalom did it, but for the for the mere for the mere mortal, it may be uh, a little too advanced. And I'm trying to just, you know, um, try and sure. get mess get the message across. Yeah. The, but, the, the only the problem you get is you you lose ninety nine percent of your zero page. Well, yeah, but we're not using any zero page at the moment. <laughs> okay. Not, not, <laughs> zero page is always a problem for me. But we can, we'll, one, we'll convert this to zero page after, once I've done the, the, because um, we're using self-modding code. Right, so what I'm trying, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put, I'm going to put the Vic, right, this is my website, by the way, right, and this is, this page is all dedicated how you can set up the Vic, the Vic chip, to be able to address your custom codes and your sprites and everything. So what I want to do is I want to, this is the default, but I don't want to put all the information there, I want to put it there, out of the way, and so... We're going to tell the Vic to, to look at bank one, which is $4,000 up to $8,000 minus one. And we're going to put everything in there. So what we need to do is we need to, we need to tweak a few figures. And the first figure we need to do is we need to tell one of the CIA chips to tell the Vic chip which bank it's looking at. And the way to do that is down here in this code. So... What we're going to do is we're going to replace the last two digits and put those two digits there in this code that will tell the Vic to put to start looking at memory bank 4000 to 8000. So we'll just copy that. We'll paste it in here. And we will change that to whatever it was, one zero. So that's now told the Vic chip which bank to look at. Now we need to tell it which area of the memory we want it to look at for each, um, for each um, the character set and the screen. And we can do that because I've got it written down here, like so. So there's a special um, location in the Vic addressing um, that allows you to set the base memory locations of the screen and also the uh, character set. And so it's D018, and these are the settings that you can put in to let it to tell the Vic chip where you want to put your use defined graphics, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to um, 
put I use define graphics here at 3000 nice round figure it's out of the way and also it means we won't get in the way of the sprites when we import these so what we need to do is here's a little snippet of the code copy that paste it in here and we want this one so it's 110 so it's basically just changed that to 110 now that set the the character address the use defined characters now we need to tell it where we want to put the the screen now by default the screen is at 0400 so in this case if we left it as it would as it is it would be at 4400 but I don't want to put it at 4400. I want to actually put it at four, so at the 4000 mark. So, a bit further down, we can specify where the screen is. And so we, I want to use this one, which is basically telling it to put it at the start of the memory bank that we specified. And in this case, it's 4000. So I need to leave the code with just the zeros in. But as you can see, there are 15 different banks that you can set the screen and you can put the screen wherever you want. Now the color information for the screen is always in the same place, D8000. It will never ever move. But you can specify where you can put the screen. So in our case, I'm putting the screen at zero. So what we need to do here is we need to end it with zero so we clear it out and that should put the screen in the right place as well so we've set up the VIC so we've told the VIC we want to look use bank one we've told the VIC where the character sets gonna be and we've told the VIC where the screens gonna be now we need to tell the Vic what the ex extra colors are because in this char pad we're in multicolor mode it's enabled so we need to set up the uh, Vic with the other extended colors that are we're going to be using for this char pad now in this particular one where it looks like we're using brown and gray so we need to set brown and gray up so brown i think is eight store that in bg color one and gray. kicks got built-in colors a constant colors so you can just put brown in capitals i think where in here yeah in it's, bit, it's, bit, it's baked into the compiler oh is the it? assembler jesus Oh, yeah. All right. I think it's going to be in capitals. Um, if just do a, a hash brown. Oh, hash brown. Or <laughs> hash green or hash red or hash light blue. Um, it will. Yeah. There you go. All right. I'll try that. See if it comes out brown. Excellent. So now we've set the two extra colors for the multicolor mode. So we set the brown and we set the gray. Now the only other color that we need to set is the character color, but that's using the D8000 character RAM space. But we're not going to be setting that. We're going to be using the tile attributes to do that when we get to it. So now we've set up the Vic, we've set up the colors, we've set up the background and all that jazz. We need now to be able to uh, draw the screen and this is where the fun begins so I'm just going to create a routine and an RTS so we can come back but we're not going to RTS I will we'll do that now for the vi for the uh, sprites we did the import we're going to do the same with this character set and we're going to put all the stuff in the places that we need so let me just copy and paste so I don't get it wrong 
So what we're going to do is we're going to put the map data at 2000. Yeah. So that's all the, um, the, 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 the data for the maps, the tiles, the colors of that and stuff like that. So at 2000, we're starting off with the tiles. So that's the tile information. That's those two by two blocks that we add in Charpad. Then we've got the tile attribute color information. So they're the colors of the, the unique color that's in that tile that's not the extended colors. We've got the color character color, but when I looked at it, it was all cyan, so we're not gonna use that because it just makes everything cyan. And then we've got the map itself. So this is actually the map that's got all the tile information that we need to grab. And then we're putting the character set at 7,000. Now 7,000 is not what I said earlier because we said that we're going to put it at 3,000. We've got to remember we're now in bank one. So you've got to add 4,000 to that number. So four plus threes was seven. And so we're putting the character information at 7,000, which matches what we set the VIT chip up with. So it's a case of just working through it. And the way we're gonna do it is if I go back in now, trying to explain it here. We're gonna start off at the top corner of the screen. Yeah? And we're going to get this tile, get this tile number, and then we have to go to this tile map and find that tile number, which then gives you four characters that you need to put on the screen. And then we, of those four characters, we then have to go run through the four characters and put them on the screen one at a time. And then we move on to the next tile, find out what that tile number is, look it up here, that gives us our four characters. And we do the same thing again and again and again. And we do it 20 times across and 11 times down. We are not talking now individual characters on the screen. We are now trying to transpose the tiles, which is 20 by 11, onto a 40 by 22 screen. So we've got, remember, you're, you're now thinking tiles. You're not thinking characters on the screen. We'll get to the characters on the screen in a minute, but that's how you've got to think. All right? I think, are we up? <laughs> Have I spelt brown wrong? No, that's about it right. So hopefully you understand that we're now going to be talking tiles, yeah? So let's start this uh, marathon. So we need to set up some pointers. So we need to set up the color script. We need, we need to set up the color RAM the uh, screen RAM and we need to set up the tile pointers. So a quick, uh, this is what I've done earlier moment. So we're taking the low byte and the high byte of screen RAM and we're storing it in screen and screen plus one. Same with the color RAM, we're storing it in the color uh, pointer and the map itself, we're going to store that in map tile and map tile plus one. And then we need to start looping. So we need to initialize our row. And now we need to start the loop. So draw. So that's, so this is our, where we're going to be drawing the rows. Okay. So we need to initialize our column counter. And then this is where the fun happens because now what we need to do, what we're, going, what we're going to do is we're going to read the character map, at the, the tile map, one uh, segment at a time. Remember that the tile number is one byte, but it represents four bytes on the screen. So we have to take that one byte and then we have to convert it into, by looking up in the tile map, convert it into four bytes, and then those four bytes then get stored onto the screen. All right? Hopefully, that makes sense. So we need to initialize our tile lookup mechanism, yeah? 
So I've called it tile char lookup, and I think Shallon called it that, I think, as well. So, like I say, I watched his video to see how he did it and then tried to make it a little bit a little bit less advanced. And then once we've initialized our lookup, we need to read our tile. Now, this is one of the clever bits I found in Kick is that you can specify a label mid instruction. So here we go. So this is getting because we've initialized it using our map data. This is getting the first tile number in our tile map. And because I've put the label there, it's now referencing these two bytes. So you don't have to do the plus one and plus two. You can actually specify the byte that you want to reference. So we need to store that in our tile number that we've already got because we need to use it later on. And we also need to store it in our lookup. But remember that tile number, that tile number re reflects four bytes on the screen. So what we need to do to extract the four bytes out of the tile map, we've got to multiply this by four. So to multiply it, we'll, we'll ASL the actual byte, then we'll roll its next one. So that's effectively times two. And then we'll do it again. times four. Now we have got our location of where that, well not location, our offset. We have now got our offset of where those four bytes are in the tile map. And what we need to do now is we need to add, whoops, we need to add the map itself so the map of the tiles to that offset. So this is what we need to do. Da, da, da. Right, now we've got our tile, lo that's where our tile four bytes are located. So we worked out the offset from the tile number. We've added our base tile map address to the offset, which has now resulted in eg the exact location of where the bytes are. So we need to draw the tile now. Now we've worked it out. We need to draw it. So uh, draw tile because we're going to have to loop round to draw the tile. We need to put four characters on the screen. So the way to uh, draw to draw the tile is we're we're going to do a loop of four, and <laughs> we have to do some clever jiggery pokery. Hopefully it'll work. <laughs> <laughs> <Damn it. laughs> 
<laughs> Commentator's curse, eh? Okay, here we go. So, we need to look up our character. So this is where this is where Tal Char lookup is. And copyright Andy. Now Y is going to be our character looper. Yeah? So this is whoops. So this is gonna get tile character. So that's now going to get our uh, our character uh, our character to store on the screen. Then we need to store it on the screen. So this is where another one of our labels comes into it. Copyright C64 mark. But now we have an issue because we need to store it, but we need to know where to store it. And this is where... <laughs> And, and this is where we need to uh, now work out where we're going to store it on the screen. We need to, so the first character goes on the line, then the second character goes next to it, but then the third character needs to go to a line below and the fourth character one up off that line. So we need to then work out um, a, a character offset for those four characters. Now Shalom did a really really cool thing and I copied it. So I'm not I'm not ashamed to say I copied this because I thought it was really really cool. And he created a tile location offset table. Right? And basically what we're going to do is we're going to read this tile offset table to plonk those four characters. So the Y register is going to loop through four times to make sure we're doing four characters but what we're going to do here is we're going to load X um, with the tile offset comma Y So, the way this works is when we run through it the first time, Y will be zero. So we read the tile character, which is the first one in the set of four. We put that in the accumulator. And then the next thing we do is we, re we load X with the tile offset. Now for Y equals zero, will be zero. So, it may, so when we store it in babe, it's going to be babe plus zero. So it will store the character in the top corner when we then loop round and do the second event, second iteration, Y will be one, so it reads the next character from, from Boo. God, this is sounding strange. Um, loads one, because that's index of one in the table. So we look. So we load one, so it means that when we store it in babe, comma one, that means it loads it to the next character. When it runs through again on the third iteration, we load the third character, but then we load 40. So when we store it to the screen, we store it to the screen and then add 40 to it, which means it's the line below. And then last one is 41. Such a simple idea, I thought it's just a simple idea why not use it? And so we here, this is where we're loading X to offset the screen, which is there. This allows us then to not have to use... <laughs> this allows us to not have to do any sort of silly mathematics. We've got a table with four bytes in it, straightforward, Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. So what we need to do, now we've put this character on the screen, we, need, we now need to set the color value of that character. So we'll load X again. 
with the tile number, which is what we got earlier. So that's the tile number of the four bytes. And then we'll load the color information for that tile. I can't type for toffee. Color information for the tile. Because all four characters will have the same color. At least you can spell color. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that really triggers me. I don't know why. It just <laughs> really, really triggers me. Yeah, me too. Me too. So, and because the tile is four bytes all four bytes will have the same character color and that's why we're not having to do any clever uh, ma uh, multiplying to get the color information so then John, isn't, isn't isn't the color applied to the character not the not the tile well the when i looked at the character color it was all cyan yeah but when i looked at the color in the tiles when I loaded that in and put that onto the, the, the color RAM, it worked. And I thought, oh, right, so the four, the tile, right, has only one bit of color information to it. When you look at the data, and I can, and I can show you that because we can export it as assembly, the, 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 the color information is the same number of uh, at, uh, bytes as how many tiles there are. So if there was 57 tiles, you get 57 bytes of color information. And so I assumed that that color had to be applied to all four all four characters on the screen. And it seemed to Just work. Beauty, the, 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 the char attributes is done with the color and the and the and the four extra bits um, for the um, materials. That's that's how I've always done it anyway. Uh, this seemed to work, mate. So, I, I, I did. That's what that's what I'm saying. I didn't know what the material was all about when I was look, reading up the documentation. But we'll carry on. It seemed to work. We'll carry on. When it doesn't work, when we do the game, we'll figure it out. So we need to do the same thing again, right? So we've got our color information. So we need to load. The offset again. Because now we need to store it. Now I don't know whose copyright this is. I think this is Shalom's, I think. So we store it in the color room. He's gone vegetarian now, so we can't use it. He's gone what? He's gone what? Vegetarian. Oh, has he? Oh, so it's yeah, not. It's, it's a, not a, his. It's not his anymore. Right, I'll claim. I'll claim that one then. No. <laughs> he's got a bad stomach, so he's he's gone vegetarian. So it helps, which probably it has. So, big big so yours, mate. <laughs> so that's right. I'm claiming copyright copyright for that one. Right. So we've now we've stored the character. We've stored the color. So now we need to complete the loop. So we're going to increase Y, which is our four character. Compare it with four. And if it's not equal to, we're going to go back to here. So it cycles back round. So that should now put the four, the, the, the four characters of that tile on the screen. Right, the next thing we need to do is we need to update our um, locations. Now, I've been playing, so I want to do this. So I've been playing with macros because we're going to be updating a lot of macros. So I created a macro to do this. So using the, the um, Derek Mon Morris uh, terminology, which I seem to can't get out of my head, so... So this is adding an 8-bit number to a 16-bit address. 
So we have got the add address and the add value. And basically we take the address, we add the value, store it back in the address, and then if we go over the page, it'll add one. If we don't, then it adds zero. And then we can use that macro to do all our updates. So for example, the first one. So we're gonna update the map tile. So we are calling our macro. We're saying that's the address and I want to increase it by one. And then the others, which is the screen and color, we're increasing by two because you've got to remember each tile is a two by two. So we're in, when we're going across, so remember we're still in the row, we've done the column now, we're in the row, back. we're back in the row. Um, we are increasing two bytes. So we've put two bytes in, we need to increase by another two. And that's what this does. So it increases the screen location by two and it increases the color location by two. And I thought that was a, a lot simpler than having to do all that jig copying and pasting. We just use a macro to do it. Now we need to increase the column because we have finished doing all our bits. Load the column in because we need to test it. And we are testing with 20 because that's how many tiles we've got. And if it's not equal to, we need to branch back. But when I when I branched back, it was too far. So we have to do a branch if equal to bypass it. So end uh, draw column loop, which is here. And then we jump to draw column from loop. Oh, go stop it, VS Code. I know it's not there. Because I forgot to put it in, which is there. So that's where we're going back to. And the reason I've done this is because between here and here, when you expand these macros out, is more than 128 bytes going backwards. So if you're doing a branch, if not equal, and it's, it's too far to do the branch, you branch if equal past the jump, and then you jump to where you go. Yeah. So that's just a quick tip. Now, now we've done the column, we've done all that. We need to now um, do the rows. So, yeah, same thing again. We are going to update our screen and color locations by 40. I'm going to increase the row. Put that in hex, you lazy sod. <laughs> no. Uh, I'll start calling you Hazemaker. <laughs> no. Okay. Real men use hex. It's easier. Oh, dear. Uh, 40 is 28. I'm going to get banned soon, aren't I? <laughs> um, 16. It's one four. Oh, I'll get away with that one. I'm all right with the zeros, yeah? 
I want this commenting properly. People are going to learn from this. Where's your comments? Hey, I'm putting them in, look. I've got a few in there. Putting comments in a bit. Right. As before, we can't branch if not equal because it's really too far. So we're doing the same thing again. So we'll branch if equal. I'm gonna, we're going to go past it. So N column, but instead this is going to be called row. And we're going to jump to draw row loop. And then that is going to return out. So that's it. Famous last words. That's it. That should be it. That should take this map, the tile map, convert it into the characters, and then plonk it on the screen. Should we give it a go? Let's see if I can let's see if it'll break. We're taking bets. Here we go. Ha! <laughs> Straight away. Oh poo. It failed straight away. It's a, it's a compilation error. Um, yeah, because I copied it off my website, which is in CBM mode. The comments are wrong. I forgot to change the comments. There we go. Tile number. Have I? <sighs> Plank. VS Code. Stop it. Here we go. Come on. Why is that so slow? Okay, what have I done wrong? That's right, that's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Don't you need to add two rows on? Because it's, it's a two by two tile. Uh, no, because if you think about it, right, when we when we do the entire row, we we're already at the end of the row, yeah. So all we need to do is just add another 40, which is the second row. Oh. Come on, John, you should read properly. I don't know why that's slow and it's not in multicolor mode. Oh, is it slow because I'm streaming? Mm. Let's put it in vice. Have you checked the speed that the um, emulator is running at? Is it 100%? Oh, that's a good one. Uh, what's the command for that? It normally says in the bottom left hand corner, but you've got that yeah. thing around it, so I've got no idea. Let's let's get it running in Vice. That's the only problem with this uh, extension. You can't separate 
running it normally. Have I got to if I got to do that direct injection stuff? No, it's slow. Why is it slow? I mean, it's there, but why is it slow? Okay, what am I doing wrong? Why the hell is it slow? I know this works because I've got it working and I've got the code on the other screen so I know it works. Just don't know why it's slow. Let's check the emulator speed on Vice because I don't know if I've slowed it down. No, that was fine, it's 100%. I checked the it popped up. Right, so it's in warp mode, but that's only on load though, isn't it? There we go. Oh. Yeah. But that is not the file. But that is in warp mode. Yeah, I've just... <laughs> right, I've just compiled the other one. <laughs> right, this is the other one. This is the one I did earlier. This is my Blue Peter moment, yeah? So this is the file that I've, I've copied. So I've done something wrong and I've just got to find it. All right? There you go. That's what it should look like. So what have I done wrong on this one? because it was a lot slower. Look, that is just stupid. I've done something fundamentally wrong. I bet it's con I bet it's drawing more than once. Have I screwed up an index? Yep. I've screwed up an index. Oh, you are absolute wally. Yep. I'm a complete and utter plank. I forgot to initialize that. Come on, now I can go back into debugger mode. There we go. Thank God for that. All right, let's put it back in debugger mode. This is quicker. There we go. But it's not in multicolor mode. So I've missed something. Oh, there it is. That's what I've missed. So we need to set up multicolor mode here. Does anybody know how to set up multicolor mode?
And there we go. One character map, one character pad char map in C64. Now, I noticed something that I haven't done in in the program because I've only just noticed it. But Stacy's got a bell that rings. So we could get that bell ringing. I think that'd be cool if we could do that. So, let's see if we can get the bell ringing. So we need to work out where that location is. And then rotate through the three. You had to pick three. Why did you pick three? John, it's not three, it's four. Because it has to return to the centre. So you're reusing the flat one twice. Oh, yeah. So you need a table. Yeah. But it's, yeah, we need a table, don't we? But I don't need to redraw the entire screen. I just need to redraw that those two tiles in that location, yeah? What I would do, and this is just me, um, I'd put a blank tile in there, and then I'd copy the... Uh, character data from that, that pseudo tile uh, into the character memory so that you're changing the characters instead of redrawing it. Right. Because then it doesn't, then if it scrolls or, or whatever, you don't need to bother about finding out where on the screen it is, you're just updating the character. Right. Hmm. Yeah, I would do the same thing, but I think for this, because we're not scrolling, we'll just replace that location, yeah? Because it's not gonna scroll and it's quick and we can get it we can get it on there. But yeah, I like what you're thinking. I yeah, I would do that, modify the actual characters themselves to the three sets and say put the put you know blank tile there okay right what have we got so we've got tile 27 28 and 29 so so it's going to go 27 28 27 29 so it does that that and then back to that and then that then it'll come back to that that uh, yeah all right so we need to work this out so this is one two three four five and then one two so it's five rows down One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, that must be twenty there. It's got to be twenty. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, and nineteen. Eighteen and nineteen. Okay. Yeah, I mean that I mean that's okay, Stuart, but if we just if we just create a table 
then we don't have to do all that mess around because we'll just read the four bytes in the table. So we'll just create a we'll just create another table. So it's going to be similar to this, but this is going to be uh, Bell Animation Tiles. And so it's what 27, 28, 27. 29 so what we'll do is because we're just going to loop where is it where is it I've lost it here because we're just going to loop round and round and round so we'll just push that down so it's out of the way so we don't get confused so we'll just put some simple uh, logic in there that allows us to um, rotate through it effectively so we need to um, we need to get we need to do the off-screen test so that's this which I've just nicked straight out the sprites so we'll get rid of that So jump to loop when we're finished. So we've te we're now off the screen, sort of. So now we can um, we'll do an ink two oh just to make sure we're all right. So we'll have a frame counter. What number was the frame counter that we used? Put that in there. So effectively, we're going to do the same as what we did with the sprites. Yeah, is we're going to loop through, um, and count how many frames we're doing. So we'll do the same thing. We'll do thirty-two, and. goes back no that doesn't that carries on so we're going to animate the bell right so we need the frame worker out of a routine which I'm going to nick from the sprite program that we did we'll put it there Put sprite frame. What what number was that one? But we're not going to use the same number because when I bring the sprites in, I'm going to we're going to um, cross contaminate. So the next one is B three. Right then, so we've animated it. We need to work out what frame we're on and then add it to the locate it on the table. Wicked, right? So that should give us our X value for here. So we should be able to. We're going to have to split this out, I think. Going to have to split this out. We're going to have to make this a routine, but I'll copy and paste it for the moment.
No, no, it's not you moving the screen. I'm just thinking the best way of doing this. Ah, uh, sod it. We'll have to... We'll have to do it the bad way and then figure out later. I, I'm not going to spend t waste time trying to work it out. So we've got we've got the tile number so we need to multiply it by 4 so we effectively need to do this bit here So we have the tile number, so we need to do this bit here. So okay, so let's copy it. I know you're gonna all scream at me and say, oh, well, this is just cheap and dirty. We can optimize it later. Cheap and dirty is always good. Yeah. So that's work, so that's doing that. Then Draw in the tile. So we need that bit. Because we're going to do it twice, aren't we? This is why I don't want it. Oh well, never mind. So we're going to have to do this twice. So this is uh, tile one. tile two. Oh, hang on. Was it two tiles or one? Where is it? No, oh, it's two tiles. Okay. Twenty seven, twenty nine, thirty one. So I got the tile numbers wrong for a start. Yeah, yeah. Got the tile number. Right, tile number. So we have that. So that can go in there.
I going around this the wrong way? Am I going about this the wrong way? We've loaded the tar number in. Store it in the, right, okay. Store it in the tar number. And then we'll increment it because it's the next one. Right, okay. Don't need to put tile number in, or do we? Yeah, we'll put that in. And then we need screen location, so screen. Because we can hardwire the screen and color locations. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I thought of that as well. So we're loading the tar. So we're loading the tar number from the byte. We're sending in the screen location and the color location. Right. So we need that in there, and we need that in there. So we're sending the screen color. The offsets will sort that out. So that's one tile, and then we increase for the next one. Yeah. Right, that'll do. Yeah, we're just trying to animate it just to demo it. Right, so I don't need that there. We've worked out. We worked out the time number. That's the character lookup. That's what we need to send in. It's the character lookup, isn't it? That's what we need to send in. Yeah. John, I think it should be draw the uh, tile, not straw the tile. Say again. Oh. <laughs> You've got an S, not a D. Uh, steps pointed out in chat. <laughs> it's way you define the map, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've just seen it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me as always. Right. So we're passing in the character lookup. So we can get the character. 
the tile number we don't need there but we need it here but we can get that because it's we've stored it because we stored it here there so we work out the tile lookup then we can file a macro okay Right. So that's that screen. So screen, we need to work out the screen. So I was saying it was what? Duh, dear. Five rows down, which is 10 rows in essence, isn't it? 10 down and 18 so that's 36 across well, that's 400 and 36 Well, that's where that needs to go. I think, if my maths are right. And D9. Right, so we need to slow it down. So if we double it, so that's 64, that means we've got to divide it by eight. If we 128, divide by 32. That should slow it down. Now, it's, if I've got this right, it's only going to animate one tile, if I've got this right. Well, that's no time like the present. Well, I got it wrong. It's in the wrong place. Psychedelic. Yeah, dearly. I think I'm in the wrong place. Where was I? Was it what two down too many? Well, it's rotating through it, but it's not there. It's minus 80 of it. in the right place either. Oh, 
Oh, well, that was close. Hang on a second. Still one out, I think. I think I've still one out. Because we've got an odd number, we shouldn't be having an odd number. Yeah, it's got to be what that's got to be here, surely. One, two, three, four. Yeah, that's got to be a two. But now, why is the why is that not? pointing to the right place. Load. Let's have a look at the bike dump. That's right. Offset, store it in the screen. Four and six, three in this case. Time number is that location. Okay, so it's assembled it right. Okay, let's do some debugging. Let's find out what's going on. So I need to put a stop. Where do I need to put a stop? There. O eight eight O. Here we go. Up. Thank you. Right. Oh, eight, eight, oh, which is there. F eleven. Right, we're there. So why are we not seeing the bell? So O oh, two. So here we're looking at this sort of area and nine. 905, which is down here. Ooh. Is that getting mixed up? Five. No. Right. So we're getting mixed up. But it's looking at that location, which is right. 
905, which is there. What's in 905? A008, that's the right one. Hmm. Have you noticed something wrong? The Y is just carrying on counting up. Can you see it? We're on D at the moment. We should have stopped at four. I think that's part of us problem. So we need to Because it was it was just counting up the tiles. Well, he's doing the right four, I think. Is it? Where are we? What am I missing? Oh, you idiot. Oh, you complete... A Wally. Right, where am I storing that? Be bell frame counter. Right. <sighs> you idiot. Well, something's moving and it looks like the right ones may not have been the right order I just need it to right so tile number spell animation comma X Let's just make sure we got 27 29 27 31 So twenty seven, twenty nine, thirty one, twenty seven, twenty nine, twenty seven, thirty one. They were in decimal, yeah. Yeah, they are.
So why is it? I've still got my. Um, there's still something wrong with that macro, isn't there? So it's load. We're sending the chart. So we're loading up. Oh. No. We're increasing Y. Why are we looking at the char lookup again? Yes, because we have to get the next character, don't we? Tile offset, store it in screen, comma X. This is where I think we are falling over. Uh, I think we're getting the. I don't know if the assembler's getting the names mixed up, so. Let's do that. Keek seems to use 16 significant characters for the names. Does it? Yeah, after that, it's, it seems it's the same, but you've got 16. I got caught out with it doing something a while back. Right. Well, let's see if, uh, see if we have a bit more luck with that. It's only changing one character. It's only changing one character. That macro should be working. It's only changed. Where's that going back to? Does it does does it actually put the uh, temporary labels in? It can't do. Oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. I know what's wrong. This is looking at where I've put the char character location address, not the... Right. That's not good. It, I'll try and explain. It is looking, where is it? It is looking at that location, then adding one, two, three on that location, which it should be looking at the address, which it's not doing here. That's why it's not picking it up because it's, and, and that's why we're only showing one character because it doesn't know what the other ones are. That's why they're solid. Self-modifying code. So, here, we need to create another location that we can use. I don't know, I don't know. Right. 
Let's put that in the macro. It's the only way we're going to do it. Right, so this is temporary char lookup. Can I do that? We're about to find out. This will be interesting. So we don't need that. We need that though. We don't need that because we're loading tile in. No, doesn't like it. Right then. Let's use that. Right. I don't need that in here now. So we send in the zero page. We're getting there. I still think. Is that rotating the right, right, right same number of characters? Right. 
0863. Need to rotate around that. Right, 45, where are you? going on there. Way off the reservation that is. Do you initialize Bell phone counter? No, but we don't initialize the zero page though, and that's what's doing it. Because I, I was looking at the the high byte of the zero page, and it was at like a a zero, and and I think we're not initializing the zero page high byte. We're initializing the low byte because that's where the that's where the um, tile number is, but not initializing the high byte. So it's just been it's just been multiplying by four all the time. Oh, oh, no! Don't want that one. Go away. Ah. Oh. Bet the life share's gone now, isn't it? Yep. There you go. Let's make sure I hit the right screen to do this. Who would have thought trying to make a bell? Oh, you are joking. Oh, he's doing it. Oh. 
Oh my god, it's doing it. Right, we just need to do the other one. So we've got the tile number there. We don't modify the tile number. Right, okay. We're on a winner. Right, let's get that. Right, so we need to add four. We need to add four to that because we want the next tile. We need to increase tile number because we need the color information and then we just draw it three three no it's not it's four and it? it's twos come on don't make this difficult for me That's doing it, isn't it? That's doing it. <laughs> oh dear, eleven o'clock. Right, now do we put the sprites on there? Yes. I'll finish it off. Right, so because we've got a different frame counter for the bell, we don't want to use the frame we don't want to use the frame counter that the sprites are using. So we're gonna have to give we're gonna have to give it a different one. So we'll call. Uh, or do we use that frame counter, but then work it out for the sprites? Because the sprites are only thirty-two divided by four. But we can end it, can't we? We can end the frame counter before we work it out. And it with a. Think on this. If I was doing, if I was adding up to thirty-two and then going back to zero, we could end it with thirty-one. Effectively, do the same thing.
Okay. Right. Right, so how are we going to do this? How are we going to do this? Right then, let's grab the sprite file. Have I got it open here? Yeah. Let's grab the sprite file. Da, 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 da. So we need that. And we need that. Yes, we need that, and we need that. We don't need the constants, because we have got that. Right then. Right, let's see what damage we can do. Well, we don't need that for kickoff. We don't need that. We don't need f that, because we've already got it. So we'll call this uh, Sprite Routine. So when we go, so it's starting it. We don't need to do that right. Sprite Initialization, okay. Don't need that, don't need that, don't need that. Setting the sprites. Setting the sprites, setting the thing, setting the colors. Initializing the frame and jumping. Right, RTS. Right, this is the looper. Now we don't need to do that at all because we're already doing that. So this is effectively the sprite control. So do the sprite control, jump the cycle. Here is no longer a jump loop with an RTS back to the original loop. So this should be all the same. It's this one that we need to, uh, this one. So we need to end that with 31. Cycle and right, the sprite data is not going to go there because we're now at bank two, so that's going to be four six. Let's get rid of that so we don't get confused. We'll get rid of that because we don't need it. Right. Don't need that. Right. So in here, we'll do it at the end. We'll do it at the end. So here.
Right, so, first things first, we need to go there. So when we initialize the Vic here, before we do the draw, we need to do that. No, we'll do it after the draw. So that's initializing the sprites. And then we need to do that. So we loop through, We're animating the bell. Then we allow the sprites to run. Right, that should do it. <laughs> What's that? What's that error? Default, the memory block sprite overlaps the cut character. Ooh. Oh, 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 oh. What did I do then? What did I do? Did I change the sprite location? must have done oh okay I didn't change the sprite location I changed the character location right I changed the character location, I moved it up. So this here, I moved it up a bank. So here, I moved it, I moved it up a bank. So the character data now is there. Hey, right, we're on a winner now. Get, let's get rid of that psychedelic rubbish. Right, where is that? That's got to be that one there. Because I don't think... I don't think I have it anywhere else. Right, so that should now be back. What? Oh, okay. Fair enough. Here we go. Right, so Quasi should fly. Here we go. Uh, jump mechanics are not working. Jump mechanics are not working. And I know why. Okay. Where's he jumping? Where's he jumping? Yeah. Also, I think I changed the frame rate as well. Yes, I did. No, 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 I'm fine. Right. Wrong spawn.
Right, so it should be jumping right now. And we should be able to walk. Right, jump. That's better. Right, let's put them in the right place. So we need the initialization system because we need to change where we're placing them. And that place is sixty twenty five one seven five and sixty seven. Cheating, John. You should be doing that. I've got to. Right then, boys and girls, here we go. So we've got Esmeralda on the tower behind the turrets we've now got a bell that's ringing and quasi can't get there poor quasi <laughs> there you go so we've implemented a char pad screen routine put it on the screen and now added our sprites that we did in the previous episodes and we got a bell ringing that took most of the time I'm having a drink I think he moves all right. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, I did something I hadn't rehearsed, which is getting the bell to ring. Never mind. That's what makes this in this this interesting. Okay, so I hope you've learned something. Learned how to put the char pad on the uh, screen on the screen. Learned a few things. We've learned macros in kick, how to do them. Learned not how not to use the same reference again. That it gets confused, which is something I should have kicking myself for that one and we've input and we've implemented the sprites and because we wrote the sprites like we did it didn't take much to implement because we just converted a couple of routines into um, JSRs so I hope you enjoyed it I'm gonna say I've had enough, <laughs> it's 20 past 11, and uh, I'll see you on the next one. Have fun guys, take care. By the way, this will be on GitHub in the next half hour. Take care guys, hope you enjoyed it. I'd like to thank all the patrons that are contributing to my channel. Without you guys, I wouldn't be able to do what I'm doing right now. Thank you very much.